Dear friends, at the beginning of September, we are reverting to our pattern of two emails per week. The Wednesday Word, bringing a thought from God's Word, and the Friday Focus with the latest church news. I'm always glad to receive feedback and comments on what I write in the updates. And as I've said throughout the pandemic, I'd be very happy to meet with anybody for a chat over a cup of coffee or for a walk, just book a slot via Jill Sage at the church office. In my daily Bible reading, I've reached the book of Ruth, which we were studying in our small groups a few months ago. Because I am reading through the Old Testament consecutively, the contrast between the appalling, brutal and godless behaviour reported in the book of Judges and the loving, faithful and godly characters depicted in the book of Ruth could not be more striking. The reason for the decline into immorality and violence in Judges is found in the repeated refrain with which the book closes. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. Well, we live in a society which is surviving off the spiritual heritage of having owned Christ as king for many generations and is currently in, engaged in an experiment to see what will happen when, no, when most own no king and consequently are doing as they see fit. We shouldn't be surprised to see a similar decline into immorality and violence that we see in the time of the judges. But equally, we should not underestimate the beauty and power of the lives of those who own Christ as King. And this is what we see in the book of Ruth. Ruth, a Moabite widow, who has pledged herself to remain with her similarly widowed mother-in-law, Naomi, returns with her to Bethlehem, Naomi's hometown, in search of food and shelter. In those days, widows were destitute and vulnerable unless a male member of their family or clan took pity on them. And this is what happens when the godly Boaz, a relation of Naomi's, takes pity on Ruth, makes sure that she has food and protects her from the unwelcome attentions of the local men. Without a trace of romance that develops later on in the story, Boaz is touched by the calamity of these two women and especially Ruth's faithfulness to Naomi. Above all, he is a man of faith and integrity, which becomes clear in the first conversation that he has with Ruth, the woman who will one day become his bride. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. What a shining example these two people are, one an Israelite man and the other a pagan Moabite woman, but united in their taking shelter under the wings of the God of Israel, and seeking to live according to his ways. As I look forward to all that the Lord has for our church in the next 12 months, I am praying that St Matthews and the Minster will be like Ruth and Boaz, known for our kindness, generosity, and welcome to all people, whoever they are, whatever their background, and whatever sort of lives they're living, and that having found refuge under our wings, they might find refuge under the wings of the Lord Jesus Christ and own him as king. God bless you today.